Dianeal peritoneal dialysis solutions are prescribed for patients with acute or chronic renal failure when non-dialytic medical therapy is judged to be not working well enough. Please see indication and important risk information at the end of the video. See accompanying full prescribing information. For more than 50 years, Baxter Healthcare Corporation has been an innovator in providing products and services for dialysis patients. In addition to dialysis product systems that have earned the trust of patients worldwide, Baxter offers home patient service representatives who help monitor patient inventory, courteous drivers who deliver your dialysis supplies to your door, and technical support staff who are on call and available to talk any time of day or night. Because we understand there's no substitute for peace of mind, we're committed to providing a variety of resources, both in video and print, to educate patients and clinicians. This video is intended to supplement your dialysis training and show you how to use the UltraBag system. First, we will take a look at the main components of the UltraBag system and outline the steps for using them. Later in the video, we will review each of these steps in more detail. If you still have questions after watching the video, don't worry, a nurse from your dialysis clinic will help you with the UltraBag system procedure and will answer any questions you may have. You will find that the UltraBag system has many features that will help you do your treatment at home. Let's start with the main components of the UltraBag system. The six main parts are the solution bag, the fill line, the empty drain bag, the drain line, the Y junction with the patient connector that attaches to the transfer set, which is connected to your catheter, and the transfer set. As you can see, the solution, the fill and drain lines, the patient connector, and the drain bag are already attached to form one complete unit. You will also need two ultra clamp tubing clamps, a new mini cap disconnect cap, and a mask. Your dialysis nurse may recommend having two mini cap disconnect caps available during your exchange. Let's look at the six main steps of the ultra bag system procedure. Step one, prepare your supplies. Step two, Connect to the ultra bag system. Step three, drain. Step four, flush. Step five, fill. Step six, disconnect. Let's review the components of the ultra bag system in more detail. You'll have a fresh solution bag, which is pre-attached to the fill line. At this junction, inside the plastic tubing, is a green plug called a frangible. The frangible has been designed to prevent the flow of fluid through the tubing until you are ready to begin your exchange. The fill line, which brings fluid from the solution bag to your peritoneum. A Y junction, where the fill and drain lines meet. The drain bag, which collects the waste and fluid from your previous dialysis exchange. The patient connector, which includes a blue frangible and a pull ring covering the end. And a transfer set with a mini cap disconnect cap. Also required for this procedure are two ultra clamp tubing clamps, a new mini cap disconnect cap, IV pole, and a mask. Again, your dialysis nurse may recommend having two mini cap disconnect caps available during your exchange. Let's see how to perform an exchange using the ultra bag system. Before you begin, it's important to be sure you're using the ultra bag system in a clean and uncluttered work area. You will need an IV pole or something similar on which to hang the solution bag. Place the ultra bag system, two ultra clamp tubing clamps, and the new mini cap disconnect cap within easy reach. Remove the ultra bag system from the over pouch and place it on your work surface. There may be some moisture present inside your pouch. Now check the solution bag according to seal, S-E-A-L. S, 
Strength of the solution concentrate. E. Expiration date. A. Amount of the solution. And L. Leaks. You can squeeze the bag to check for leaks or a broken frangible. Small droplets in the tubing or drain container are acceptable, but if solution flows past the frangible prior to use or if leaks in the solution container are found, do not use and discard the units. Discard the bag if the solution is cloudy. Next, inspect the patient connector to ensure that the pull ring is attached. Do not use if the pull ring is not attached. Finally, inspect the new mini cap disconnect cap for the expiration date. Next, remove the transfer set from your clothing. Make sure the transfer set is closed. Put on your mask and then wash your hands. These are important steps in maintaining aseptic technique. If you are being assisted in the procedure, make sure your helper has masked and washed his or her hands. If prescribed, add medication per your physician's instructions. Let's take a look at how to connect to the Ultra Bag system. First, break the blue frangible on the patient connector. To break the frangible, hold the base of the frangible in one hand and the tip of the frangible in the other. Next, bend the frangible outward until it breaks. Bend the frangible back and forth two or three times to make sure it is completely separated. There should be a small space between the broken parts for good solution flow. The frangible can also be broken by holding the base of the frangible between your thumb and forefinger while pressing the tip into a hard surface. Again, you must bend the frangible back and forth to make sure it is completely separated. When the blue frangible is broken, Remove the pull ring from the Ultra Bag System patient connector. Do not touch the sterile end where the pull ring was attached. Once the pull ring has been removed, do not reuse the solution container. Remove the mini cap disconnect cap from the transfer set and immediately connect the transfer set to the Ultra Bag System. Do not touch the end of your transfer set. Hold the transfer set steady and twist the Ultrabag System patient connector until it is firmly secured. Next, let's take a look at how to drain. First, clamp the fill line with the Ultra Clamp tubing clamp. Next, break the green frangible near the solution bag using the same method you used to break the blue frangible. Hang the new solution bag on the IV pole. Place the drain bag in the drain position, below the level of the abdomen, with the shiny side up. Open the transfer set to drain. Remember to check the drain fluid for cloudiness. If it's cloudy, contact your dialysis clinic immediately. When drainage is complete, close your transfer set. Selected important risk information. Improper clamping sequence may result in air entering your peritoneal cavity. Let's proceed to the next step, which is to flush. First, make sure your transfer set is closed, and then remove the Ultra Clamp tubing clamp from the fill line. Count to five slowly, and let the new solution flow into the drain bag. Then clamp the drain line with the Ultra Clamp tubing clamp. To fill with the Ultra Bag system, Simply open the transfer set and allow for solution to flow from the solution bag. When filling is complete, close the transfer set and clamp the fill line with the second Ultra Clamp tubing clamp. Signs of too much peritoneal dialysis solution in your peritoneal cavity may be seen by stomach enlargement, feeling of fullness, and or shortness of breath. Treatment is to drain the peritoneal dialysis solution from the peritoneal cavity and call your dialysis clinic. Finally, let's look at how to disconnect from the Ultra Bag system. First, remask and wash and dry your hands thoroughly. Open the mini cap disconnect cap package and look at the sponge in the cap to make sure it is wet with betadine. Be careful not to touch the sterile sponge. Disconnect the Ultra Bag system from the transfer set by twisting the patient connector. With the transfer set pointing down, hold the mini cap disconnect cap up 
and immediately twist it onto the transfer set until it is firmly secured. Finally, dispose of the used supplies as instructed by your dialysis clinic. Let's review the six steps again. Prepare supplies. Connect. Drain. Flush. Fill. And disconnect. Now, a nurse from your dialysis clinic will help you practice the UltraBag system procedure and answer any questions you may have. In addition to this video, there are other resources to assist you in learning about these procedures. You will find the UltraBag system procedure guide a useful reference for questions on performing an exchange. For additional information, please contact your dialysis clinic. Dianeal Peritoneal Dialysis Solution, Indication and Important Risk Information Indications and Use Dianeal Peritoneal Dialysis Solutions are prescribed for patients with acute or chronic renal failure when non-dialytic medical therapy is judged to be not working well enough. Important Risk Information Dianeal is not to be used if you have a pre-existing condition resulting in a severe buildup of lactic acid called lactic acidosis. Encapsulating peritoneal sclerosis, or EPS, is a rare complication of peritoneal dialysis therapy and has been reported in patients using peritoneal dialysis solutions, including dianeal. Infrequently, death from EPS has been reported. If you have severe lactic acidosis, you should not be treated with lactate-based peritoneal dialysis solutions. If you have a condition known to increase the risk of lactic acidosis, you must be monitored for the occurrence of lactic acidosis. Solutions containing dextrose should be used with caution if there is a known allergy to corn or corn products. Hypersensitivity reactions, such as those due to cornstarch allergy, including severe anaphylactic or anaphylactoid reactions, may occur. If this is suspected, immediately stop infusion, drain the solution, and notify your doctor. Blood potassium, Calcium and magnesium levels should be monitored carefully if you are being treated with cardiac glycoside medicines, digoxin, and others. If you have diabetes, careful monitoring of your insulin requirements and other treatments for high blood sugar should occur during and following dialysis with dextrose containing solutions. Dianeal is intended for intraperitoneal administration only, it is not for intravenous administration. Tell your healthcare professional about all of your medical conditions. The following conditions may make side effects to peritoneal dialysis procedures more likely. Abdominal conditions, conditions that prevent normal nutrition, impaired breathing ability, recent aortic graft placement, and having too little potassium. Aseptic conditions must be used throughout the peritoneal dialysis process to reduce the possibility of infection. Signs of too much peritoneal dialysis solution in your peritoneal cavity may be seen by stomach enlargement, feeling of fullness, and or shortness of breath. Treatment is to drain the peritoneal dialysis solution from the peritoneal cavity and call your healthcare professional. Your volume status should be carefully monitored to avoid potentially severe consequences, including congestive heart failure, volume depletion, and hypovolemic shock. An accurate fluid balance record must be kept and your body weight monitored. Significant losses of protein, amino acids, water-soluble vitamins, and other medicines may occur during peritoneal dialysis. Your nutritional status should be monitored and replacement therapy should be provided as necessary. Do not use solutions if they are cloudy, discolored, contain visible particles, or if the containers are leaking. Following use, the drained fluid should be inspected for fibrin or cloudiness, which may indicate the presence of peritonitis or inflammation of the peritoneum. Improper clamping sequence may result in air entering your peritoneal cavity. To reduce possible discomfort during administration, solutions may be warmed to 37 degrees Celsius or 98 degrees Fahrenheit prior to use. Only dry heat should be used. It is best to warm solutions within the overwrap using a heating pad. 
do not put the solution bag in water or use the microwave to warm the solution. Please see accompanying full prescribing information. You are encouraged to report negative side effects of prescription drugs to the FDA. Visit www.fda.gov medwatch or call 1-800-FDA-1088.